I'm just getting more and more fed up with people getting so distracted in service. Inside service, you either be talking or fiddling with your phone. The phone has been with you all week. So could you not just suspend that phone for 30 minutes to at least speak what the word has to say and then go out there in power? How important can that message be that even within the service, you are carrying it? Even people who are multimillionaires, probably in dollars, they don't even carry their phones like that. It's poor people that you will see as if their life is dependent on their phone. Yet, now Instagram, then they check. The people who are making money with their phone will leave it in the car. They know what is happening within the week. But poor people, Instagram, Facebook, like, don't. What's the point? Listen to the message that will transform your life. You just want to play with phone. Leave the phone for now. This is an important message you need to hear because this is your life. My life, our lives. So Jesus tells them and says, don't go anywhere till the Spirit comes. Till the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And we said that means the Holy Spirit is absolutely important. Because it's a different experience. Were they born again? Yes, they have believed in him because he's died and he's resurrected. They were born again. But he said, wait, something else is coming. Which means receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a different thing from being born again. So don't let anybody convince you that it's already done. You have, yes, you have the Holy Spirit within you, but there is a coming upon. That's a different experience, and it makes a lot of difference. So in case you are just in the second service, and you're wondering why pastor is putting on a t-shirt that looks like Superman, it's because of the illustration I did in the first service. I was wearing a suit in the first service with shirt. But then I said, when you get into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you start praying in tongues... It's like Superman when he takes off his suit and then comes out a different man, a powerful man, a man with supernatural powers. And I said that's what happens when you get engaged in praying in tongues, in praying in the Spirit, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When you get on your knees and you start praying in tongues, something changes. There is a shift in the atmosphere. There is a shift about you. There is a shift around you. There is a shift within you into a strange place, a supernatural place where you can pray in a different way and things happen. And so we mentioned the first, and I said, the, the enemy has kept the church ignorant of this power. If it's so important that Jesus Christ said, wait till you get it. If it's so important for them who walked with him, who saw him, who knew him, experienced him personally, why don't you think that it's absolutely even more important for you and I, particularly in these times that we are in? It's important, but the Holy Spirit, the, the, the enemy, what he does for everybody, how does he keep us in one place? How does he get a child of God stagnated? How is he succeeding in keeping you in the place you are? That is not such a good place. It's because he has kept you ignorant. He has kept me ignorant. Whatever I'm ignorant of, I can never enter into it. Whatever I am ignorant of, I can't enter into it. You can't enter into power you are ignorant of. You can't take possession of a property you are ignorant of the fact that it belongs to you or it belongs to your father. You can't take possession of it. You may even be a tenant right there, even though it belongs to your father. Why? Because I don't know it's my father's property. I don't know it was bequeathed to me. If I knew, I would take possession. So Satan has kept the church Coward, locked in, timid and all because he has kept us largely ignorant. Why? Because he has exchanged the Bible for the phone. So instead of me listening to the word, my phone is with me in service and I can never be bored. And so as long as I don't know this, I remain ignorant. As long as I remain ignorant, I remain a captive. And so they are captive children of God. Going from one house to the other seeking for deliverance. Your deliverance is not in a house. Your deliverance is in the word. So they waited. And in the first service I said, we mentioned three benefits of speaking in tongues. Because when you receive that baptism, you begin to speak in tongues. That's the evidence. What's the benefit? Is it just gibberish? Is it just blabbing away? Blah, 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 blah. What's the benefit of this? Why did he say receive this first? We mentioned number one, that it's spiritual edification. It edifies you. 
We use 1 Corinthians 14. It edifies you when you pray in tongues. And we said the best way to explain what edification means is it charges you up. When you pray in tongues, you get charged up like a battery of a phone that has run down and you connect it to get charged up. That's what happens when you begin to pray in tongues. You get charged up. You get fired up. And when you're fired up, you can do more. You can go for longer in whatever you're doing. We mentioned that in the first service. Secondly, in the first service, we mentioned that when you pray in tongues, it reminds you consistently on the indwelling presence of God. It keeps your heart in the place where you are aware that he's with you. So you don't do things that you will ordinarily do. I shared how somebody was insulting. Two people almost wanted to fight at the polling unit yesterday. Two women. One of them was wearing a t-shirt of the redeemed Christian church of God. At the back was written evangelism. But yet she was screaming at the top of her voice, don't touch me. If you touch me, I will deal with you and this and that. And she was making trouble. And people were running away from her. I felt so ashamed. I was even so grateful that I didn't wear a redeemed t-shirt. Because they would have said, maybe the two of them come together. But it ought not to be so. Now, if she had a knowing, a consistent knowing, it doesn't mean the Holy Spirit was not in her. He was probably embarrassed at what her daughter was doing. But she didn't have that knowing. There is that sense that what keeps you when you know that he's with you. It restricts you. Like the Bible says, the, the love of Christ constraineth us. Things you want to do, you know I can't do this. Can I fight? Yes. Would I fight? No. Can I slap somebody? Yes, I have a hand. But would I do it? No. Can I insult somebody? Yes. Do I have the mouth? Yes. Do I know what to say? Yes. I was born in Benin. I'm a Delta boy, so I can insult in Pidgin English and even in Yoruba. But would I do it is the question. No. Why? I know who dwells in me. I have a consciousness constantly because I pray in tongues. And it will happen to you if you pray in tongues often. You will just have that consistent knowing that he dwells in me. I can't do that. Before you do anything like traffic light that you beat all the time because last night is not there. Before you do it, you will remember that he's with me. I can't do this. Because many times we say they are not there. But you've forgotten who's there. Yellow fever is not there as you call them. Traffic warden is not there. Last night is not there. But you've forgotten who's there. There is someone who's there inside of you. Watching and with you, sitting beside you, dwelling in you while you are crossing that red light. Should I do it? No. Can I do it? Yes. But I know he's with me. I won't do it. Because he's with me. So we said he does that for you. And then the third thing and where we stopped is that when you pray in tongues, you pray God's perfect will. God's perfect will. God has a perfect will concerning marriage. Your husband who he should be. Your wife who he should be. If you don't pray in tongues often, you can step away from what is God's perfect will. And marry the wrong person. And they say when you marry the wrong person, you're already in hell before you even get there. And boy, as a pastor, have I seen people in wrong marriages. I have seen. And I've only passed out for about 13. This is my 14th year. But I've seen plenty. Why? If you had spent time praying in tongues, you would pray God's perfect will on your path. So that's three, but let's move on to the ones we want to deal with in the second service now. Another benefit of it is when you pray in tongues, it stimulates faith. Um, multimedia, can you put Jude 20? Jude 20. He says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves. A few days ago in the open heavens, this was what Daddy Gio, I said Jude 20, oh. That the Jew was talking about growing your faith. He was teaching on faith for several days. This was one of his scriptures that he used. Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So you build up your faith when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, pastor, I need more faith. I wish I had more faith. You can if you pray in the Holy Ghost. You can build up your faith. How does it build your faith? Because... We know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How does this build your faith? Faith also comes by exercising what you have. Uh, the, the disciples went to Jesus Christ and they said to him, Lord, increase our faith. He said to them, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you would say. That doesn't sound like the answer to 
Give us more faith. Increase my faith. And you're telling me if you have faith as a mustard seed, you should say. It sounds like I'm asking one thing, he's answering another. But we know that Jesus Christ will not be answering another. That was the right answer. But what was he saying to them? He was saying, if you want to increase your faith, sow the faith you have. Exercise the little you have. Then it will grow. Just the way I can, I can buff up. What do I need to do? Eh? Exactly. Start lifting, pumping iron. Before you know it, this t-shirt won't fit me. I would need to get a new set of t-shirts and everything. I can. I've always had those muscles. It's not as if the muscle of... I'm looking for somebody very muscular. It's not a... Hey, why? Me and you. <laughs> See, look at this man. Baba, you too. You're not serious. If you bring somebody who's very muscular, standing with me, we both have the same set of muscles. The biceps he has, I have. Triceps, I have. Every one he has, I have. What's the difference? He's developed his. I've not developed mine. It's the same way. You have the faith of God inside of you. What's the difference between you, Daddy G, and you and the other person who's believing for this? They've developed theirs. You haven't developed yours. But the Bible is saying if you can pray in the Holy Ghost, you will be able to rise in the place of faith. How? Why? Because every time I pray in the Holy Ghost, I am exercising faith because it does not make sense here. It doesn't make sense here. So I am praying by faith. I don't know the next word. It's not as if God gives you 100 words ahead. You don't know the next one. But you believe God for the next one. You believe God for the next one. It's an exercise of faith. And so that's how it grows your faith. I remember the testimony. Let me see if I can read it from here. Somebody shared. He says, as a young Baptist minister, listen. I pastored a community church and stayed in the home of a Methodist couple. The wife was a fine dear woman who loved the Lord. But she had an ulcerated stomach. She had ulcer, which doctors feared would lead to cancer. It was that bad. Her husband made good money, but he had spent everything he had on medical bills. I knew God could and would heal her. But somehow I was never able to lift her faith up to that point where she could believe for her healing. She ate only soft foods and milk. And had difficulty keeping that in her stomach. So even when she eats it, she may throw up. But one day, a wonderful thing happened. She received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. When I came in, she was eating foods she'd never been able to eat. What happened? She had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She was now praying in tongues. Her faith came up to the place where she could trust God for her healing. And she believed God that she was healed. And she received her healing. It was connected to her faith. The praying in tongues be. And she got healed. Maybe you've been here, you've been saying, oh God, if I can just grow in faith, I can believe for this, I can believe. Start being a regular person in the place of praying in tongues. Praise the Lord. And if you have not received that baptism today, we believe God you will receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me take another advantage of praying in the Holy Ghost. I've mentioned now that it grows, it helps your faith. It stimulates your faith. You can now believe for things that are bigger than what you used to believe for before. Another advantage. It's a means of keeping yourself free from worldly contamination. It's a means of keeping yourself what? Free from worldly contamination. Because if, if, if you have to go to a barbing salon, for example, hairdressing salon, all those places, you have to go to parties of friends or former friends or supposed friends where they play worldly music. How do you keep yourself? Because I've been there before that I attend a, a party, maybe someone in church, and that's another thing that is such an oxymoron, where you have somebody in church throw a party and then all you're hearing there is, yeah, missing Buga, and everybody's 
boogering themselves up and down. And you hear all sorts of worldly songs. And you say, but I thought this person is a child of God. I don't understand it. I don't get it. But hey, you will say this one is just because you're a pastor. You don't understand. So leave me in my ignorance, please. I'm okay with that. I'm not interested in worldly music. Never would I be again in the name of Jesus. Once I was there, but not anymore. Christ has redeemed me from the world. And I'm out of it. But... So when I go to that place and they begin to play all these songs and the bride and the groom are dancing in and they are blasting this away. Sometimes after I leave there, I may just be sitting, maybe doing something. And I start humming that song. And I catch myself and say, what? Why is this song rising up in me? I've heard it over and over and over again while I was there. And now it's coming up. So I had to find a way. And I learned that under that atmosphere, if you start praying in tongues, I'm not talking of shouting so that they don't think you don't kolo. No. I'm take a easy. But you can just under your breath. That's the good thing about praying in tongues. Like when I was at the polling unit yesterday and all the noise was going about and it looked like people were going to fight, break their heads and I wasn't sure whether they are going to steal ballot box. I did not know what was going to happen. I was just praying in tongues under my breath. I didn't start shouting in the name of Jesus. No, under my breath I was praying in tongues and breaking the power of the enemy and everything. That's, that's the advantage. Nobody needs to know. I'm not sure people knew. I'm not even sure they saw my lips move but I can do it. And so under such atmosphere, maybe when I used to go to Babin Salon and they are playing all their whatever and they are telling jokes, you know, jokes about this, some kind of very dirty jokes and they are all laughing and it's funny to them. It's not funny to me, it irritates me. But then it comes in. But now I know that I can sit in that Babin Salon and I'll just be praying in tongues under my breath. Whatever they say is not going to gain access into me. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, 28. 1 Corinthians 14, 28 says, But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. That's what you do when you pray in tongues to keep the atmosphere. You pray and speak to yourself and to God under your breath. It protects you from worldly contamination. And brethren, you need to be protected. Particularly if you have a job, you do and you occupy the same office as some people who are not born again. Maybe even your uh, colleague in the office is a, is a Muslim. And then at a certain time, he puts his mat down and starts, hey, ah, 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 oh, oh, whatever. And now you are wondering, you are even beginning to learn the vocabulary because you are being exposed to it. So when it starts, you start praying in tongues under your breath. You can keep yourself from that contamination. Riding in a train, riding in a bus or an airplane, pray in tongues. Keep yourself from the contamin contamination. You speak to yourself, you speak to God. Praise the Lord. Say, I can keep myself from worldly contamination if I pray in tongues. Remember to do that. Let me mention another one. Praying in tongues, and I love, I think this is for me the, one of the most powerful. Praying in tongues help you, helps you to pray for the unknown. It helps you pray for the unknown. Things you don't even know about. You don't know it's about to happen. You don't know it's been planned for you. You just pray the unknown. Once you start praying in tongues, you can pray the unknown. Why? Because my spirit knows. My head may not know. But my spirit is one with the spirit of God. And so whatever the spirit of God knows, my spirit knows. So if I pray out in my spirit with the help of the Holy Spirit that by praying in tongues, I am praying for the unknown. And every time I'm making a trip, every time I'm making a trip, I spend protracted time praying in tongues. Why? Because I don't know what is ahead at that trip. I don't know what aircraft, I don't know who's flying the air. I've never walked into say, I beg, I would like to see the pilot before we fly. And I'll come and look at his face and say, please, I need to open talk. Let me know whether you took alcohol. I don't. So I don't even know if he's drunk. I don't even know if he's one demonized or somebody, a satanist who's flying it and is, has decided to fly all of us into Atlantic Ocean. I don't. So every time that it comes up, 
any kind of trip, I spend a good time praying in tongues over the trip. I pray for the unknown. My spirit already knows what's ahead. I pray ahead of it. That's what praying in tongues gives to you. I read this story and I'll try and read this too. Listen to it carefully because this is, for me, one of the greatest benefits. I don't know everything. You don't know everything. But when you pray in tongues, you can cover things you don't know. You can cover that accident that was set to happen that you didn't know about. You can cover that delivery in the delivery room that you did not know that the enemy had programmed death. But you prayed in tongues and you cut it off. You can't. So he says, an English missionary to Africa was home. That means he was in England in follow. Speaking at a missionary conference, when a woman asked him if he kept a diary, notes, he replied that he did. And she began to relate to him and said, two years ago, I was awakened in the night with a burden to pray. The woman was now telling this missionary that I was awakened in the night with a burden to pray two years ago. I got out of bed and was talking in tongues before I got down on my knees. Since she didn't know what to pray, she just knew she had to pray, she started praying in tongues. For an hour, I prayed in tongues, and it seemed as if I were wrestling. When I finished praying, I had a vision. I saw you, he, she saw this missionary, pastor, English missionary. I saw you in a little grass hut, sounded, surrounded by natives. You were sick, then you died. I saw the natives pull the sheet over your head and walk sadly outside the hut. Suddenly, you came out of the hut and stood in their midst, and all the natives rejoiced. The missionary then asked her if she kept a diary. Now, the missionary is now asking her if she kept a diary. Requested her to bring that diary the next afternoon. Comparing diaries and making allowances for time differences in England and Africa, they discovered that the time of the woman's prayer burden exactly coincided with the time when the missionary was sick with a deadly fever in Africa. His partner was away. There were two. His partner was away and he was alone with the natives. Things happened just as she saw them. The missionary died. The natives saw him die and pulled a sheet over his head. Then he rose up suddenly and became well because of the Spirit of God. Why? He would have died if that woman didn't know how to pray in tongues. Because she didn't know what the burden was for. But because she prayed in tongues, the Holy Spirit directed her prayer to what she needed to pray for that man in Africa that, that had died to come back alive. You can pray for the unknown. I don't know how my children are doing abroad. They send pictures, but how are they doing? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That's how you take care of business, particularly things that you don't know that are in the future. Single brothers, sisters, this, while you are single, is the time to spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. You're already praying who your husband or who your wife will be ahead of time. That's the truth. I can, let me share two. During the COVID, COVID um, saga, so to speak, suddenly my mom took ill. My mom was back in the country and in the village then. She took ill. And they called me and they said, Mom, see, we don't know what to do. And at that time, no hospital was accepting uh, people because everybody that they brought that was sick, they assumed it was COVID and they would keep you outside. They wouldn't even run tests. Of course, back home in the village, you don't have the kind of things we have here. So they were not interested in handling any case. So that night they were carrying my mom from one hospital to the other hospital to the other hospital and it looked like she was going out of breath. She, it, everything pointed to COVID and this woman is elderly and they couldn't find a hospital for her. They said they had to take her back home, that they don't know what to do. The next day they went to us about something. They said they left the hospital, even left her in the car and said, no, don't come into the hospital. Stay outside. We'll come and take your blood from outside and do this. They didn't want because COVID. And so no progress, no traction. And yet it looked like this woman was going. And so on the third day, I just said, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. It looks like, is this 
my brother who's abroad, the ones abroad, were calling me because I'm the oldest. Yet, that, look, what, what are we going to do? They were thinking of flying her outside the country. And I said, in the condition she is, if you fly her 12-hour flight, how is she going to survive it? Who will take care of her? So I just entered the prayer room that day. And I shut the door and I started praying in tongues. I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. Mera pasada gade over my mom's health. I just started praying in tongues. As I was praying, I don't know how long, maybe not for too long, suddenly I had a knowing inside of me. Start communion service with her every evening. Tell her to buy, let them buy communion for her. Every evening, call her, pray over the bread and the wine, and let her take where she is. You take here and pray. And I came out of the prayer room knowing what to do. And I called my mom. I said, send them to buy communion elements for you. Let them stop running around from one hospital to the other. And they bought. Day one, day two. By the day two, mom was healed. By day three, she was back and jumping and settled. All of that went away just like that. But I could pray for the unknown because I can pray in tongues. During the time we're going through this so-called ordeal of this road construction that we had to, they were going to demolish the church, we had to look for a place to get. Most of my praying that time, maybe 95%, if not 100%, let me be modest, 95, was in tongues. Because I didn't know what, what this was about. I didn't know how we got land and then suddenly the land is no longer our own. It, it was all a mess. So how do you pray that in understanding? There was, for me, really no way. The only way to pray that was to pray in tongues. So most of my prayers that season were going through all of that was in tongues. Because it was an unknown territory for me. It was unknown. I, didn't, I had no clue what was going on. Who, where was this coming from? Is this an attack? What should we do? I didn't know. Most of my praying was in tongues. It was one night I was praying in tongues, and I prayed in tongues most of that night, just laying by on, the, on the floor. And by the time I was done praying in tongues, as I was about to get up, I went into what seemed like a trance or drifting away. And I saw Isaiah chapter 51, verse 3. I just saw IS 51 dash whatever 3 rise up from the ground like smoke, like whatever. It just floated above like this. And I can see, I could see it in the spirit. So I quickly rushed and I opened it. I knew God was giving me an answer. And when I saw it, I laughed. Comfort, the Lord will comfort Zion. The Lord will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness as Eden and her desert as the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be heard therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. And I knew that what God was telling me was what you are seeing is not anything close to what I'm about to do. You will yet sing. You will yet dance. You will yet rejoice. And that settled my heart. I had that scripture to latch on as an anchor and I held it throughout the period and I was no longer tormented. But that's because we could pray in tongues. Rise up on your feet. There are many, many, many more benefits. But I'm just giving you this. Why? I want to encourage you. One, if you have not received that baptism of the Holy Spirit and you don't pray in tongues, today is your day. But if you have, and you haven't been using it, then start 